but very honored, I'm very honored that you could see me. I know you're busy. Day. Day. Yeah. Thank you for taking this on. No, we're, we're going to do the best job we can on that and carry on the Reagan message to Latin America, which is the privatization and employee ownership message. But you know, yeah. I had a story that I told not recently, but should tell more and, uh, about this whole thing. Uh, Big plantation and farm there. Oh yeah, the Bob Perlow project. And the yeah. uh, uh, and there was this ownership thing. Yeah. Yeah. And the guerrillas attacked. That's right. And the farm workers yeah. beat them off. Well, that was, uh, because of uh, it was theirs. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't about to stand aside. No, it shows that Reaganomics works. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to carry that message. Well, this okay, Mr. President, I appreciate it very much. Appreciate it very much, your having me on a short list of the world thing. I think too. I'm just very grateful for that. I'll do my best when it comes that way. But thanks for that. Appreciate it. Okay. Simply, how old would you be? I'm sorry, I mean, the theme probably would be how many candles would be on your birthday cake if you told us how old you were for real? Too many, said he. Because of fire, you see, they had to be blown out by too many. And so I think it was best that we just left that out. And uh, so, but uh, anyhow, this was a lovely birthday night. Well, agonizing. Let me just assign that. That would be just good, sir. I'm now down. Another wonderful line by spoken several years ago, he's now 90, but by George Burns. He's 85th. And someone asked him, How does it feel to be 85 years old? And George said, When I feel like I'm 85 years old, I'll let you know. That's great. Sir, it's been my thrill of my life to work for you. Thank well, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Say about right here. Oh, the desk in the background, please. Oh. Okay, you're not going to have any problems with all that light. Okay, are you all set? Yeah. 
right. there. So All right. I'll be there. Back up. I know you know and understand more about Nevada than any president we've ever elected because you're a right next door working with me and I'm Senator Paul Weissel. And before those days, I even played Las Vegas twice. For <laughs> <laughs> two weeks, once for two weeks. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, we'll hope even for part of the day you can play Las Vegas again. Uh, I'd like that. I hope too. We were talking earlier, Jim, that uh, Sig Rogans, who helps so greatly with the presidential campaign on the Tuesday team, is also going to be helping you, and the president was delighted with that. Um, we'll get the whole rating team together here. I can't, uh, even my tenor of time, they can't go too far along with the likes of President Reagan, Senator Michael, and Sig Rogans. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. This is J.D. J.D. Hello, baby. I'm so happy to meet you. And Denise Santini Shaw. Why don't you all come in? Why don't you all get here in front and you know, we'll have a little group photography here. Come over here. Right. Yes.
statement about uh, the Last Supper, that the words were, <laughs> everyone who wants to get in the picture can suck at the dick. Gentlemen, and I appreciate this morning, uh, you coming over this morning to present your recommendations. And I know you've all worked hard and very hard, as a matter of fact, and I'm glad that your report is bipartisan and unanimous. I've met with Dave over the past few weeks, and he's kept me apprised of your progress. And I'm pleased to say that your work well may, may well be the most comprehensive bipartisan review of the defense establishment since World War II. And I plan to review your recommendations in detail, and I will act promptly and firmly to take appropriate implementation actions. And I hope that the Congress will join me and do their part as well. And now, Dave, the spotlight is on you. Well, Mr. President, it's a great honor for me to present this report uh, to you that contains our first set of recommendations. And uh, I speak on behalf of all of the Commission to say that we have been very honored to have the opportunity to help you and Secretary Weinberger in this very important job of getting the most defense we can from the billions of dollars that are being spent. And we know that you and the Secretary have made a great deal of progress in the past five years. And moving ahead toward that end. And I want to tell you that this commission has worked very hard and uh, that uh, every single member of the commission has made an important contribution in developing these recommendations that we are presenting to you today. And we hope very much that these recommendations will help you and the secretary continue this important job to improve the strength and the readiness of our armed forces so that they can continue to be the bulwark of freedom and peace in this troubled world of ours. Dave, I thank you very much. And as I said on Wednesday, the Commission's recommendation points the way. And I'll, I'm looking forward to, to getting into this. And I'll implement the recommendations that are in here just as quickly as it can be done, even if they run counter to the will of the entrenched bureaucracies and special interests. And I will also urge Congress to read the Commission's report and to remove those obstacles and the good management that the Congress itself has created over the years. And again, I thank you all for all the work that you've done. How much waste is there in the current system, Mr. President? There is a lot less waste than there was when we came here. And there will be even less as we go forward as 
Packard has told you with the recommendations that are in here and that he himself has said follow the pattern of things that have already been started. Mr. President, there are reports that President Marcos has brought millions of dollars worth of currency and jewelry to Hawaii from the Philippines. Is that appropriate considering the economic problems there? I don't think, I, again, I think that uh, there's no way for us to uh, know anything about this. This is up to the government of the Philippines and the people of the Philippines. But I think now we've got to get on with some more meetings. Should Mrs. Aquino have released the Marxist leader in the Philippines? Thank you very much. Should Mrs. Aquino have released the Marxist leader? Marxist leader? Marxist leader? Marxist leader? Marxist he goes over every TV shot and every still photograph and approves those, and they're the only ones that can be used. And I don't know why we can't. <laughs> 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 I should go up here. Yes. Now, for this one, we're going to have, on the end, can you move over one more person? There you go. There's an empty spot right here. That's fine. Now, you, sir, can you come on over? 
One more, one more right there, right with it. Let's let's freeze. All right.